Sorry. Now that it's four thirty one by my clock. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. It's four thirty. Uh for roll call. Ben. Here. Lloyd. Here. Jill. Here. And I'm Michelle and I'm here. We also have Wright County Sheriff's Department. Thank you guys for coming. Um Wendy and Maggie. Do you want to start with your time or do you want me to? I can. Okay. So at the May council meeting, <clears throat> after the Sheriff's Department was done presenting all of their facts and their reports and stuff, there was some discussion about um, Sheriff's Department versus a police department, um, whether we should go with the extra two hours. You know, there was a bunch of questions. So you guys asked if we could put together some information and hold a workshop. So I contacted um, Howard Lake, and I contacted Annandale, and we contacted um, Maple Plain, that's what, right hand of prison? West hand of public service. And I was in touch with the county, and got a lot of different numbers from everybody. So um, we can start out, um, so on the front page, or on this, this next page, it's the Wright County Sheriff's Department. We currently contract with the Wright County Sheriff's Department. We have for several years. I couldn't even tell you when we started, long before my time. Um, but I, so I just listed from 2004 on. That was when we went from five hours a day to eight hours a day in 2004. And we've been at eight hours a day ever since. So those are um, the rates, what they were back then, what they are now, how much we've paid over the course of the years. In those costs, I just listed a couple. I said below a few costs that include this rate. It's the cost of their salaries, the insurance, workers' comp, retirement, et cetera, everything that you have to pay when you have employees. Cost of vehicles, uh, building and staff, computer systems and programs, subscription fees that go with all those programs, equipment, uh, prosecuting attorneys, detectives and investigators, if they're needed, any training, um, the jail if we need to use it. So. Those are just a few of the small, or some of the bigger items that are included in there. Of course, there's probably thousands of other costs, of course, included in these costs. So the county board recently approved the 2018 and 2019 rates. <clears throat> they are $72 an hour for 2018 and $74.50 an hour for 2019. Um, at this time, the Sheriff's Department is also asking that the city increase their hours of coverage from eight hours per day to 10 hours per day which in partnering with the city of Waverly would give the city coverage from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. daily. And then I listed the costs, um, what it would be if we stay at to eight hours and what it would be if we went to 10 hours for the next two years. So eight hours, we'd have the 210,240. If we went to 10 hours, we'd be 262,800. So about a $50,000 difference. Um, and the same with the next year. It's, and I said, while adding the extra two hours per day does result in a fifty to sixty thousand dollar increase, the sheriff's department does feel that the increase in hours is necessary. The city's population in two thousand four, which was the year we went from five to eight hours, was eighteen hundred ninety two. Our population as of April first of twenty sixteen, because that's the last one we get from the state demographer, was thirty one hundred and thirty six. So not quite double, but getting pretty close. And that's why they're asking for the additional two hours a day because of the size of our population. And I think we're just a little over 17 miles of streets now in the city. So that was the information I had for the Sheriff's Department. So I don't know if anybody has any questions on that. So then I looked into some of the local police departments. Um, the majority of the cities in Wright County contract with the Sheriff's Department. Buffalo, Annandale, and Howard Lake are the only cities within the county that um, have local police departments and they have been established for many years. I, mean, it's, I think they've been around as long as I ever know. <laughs> so it says below some information that was gathered from these three, or from um, Annandale, Howard Lake, and West Hennepin. I didn't get any information from Buffalo because of the size of Buffalo. Yeah. It's, so basically what I did was I just pasted this in. This is from the Annandale, the city administrator in Annandale for their police department. She's got a few points she would share. Historically, our hourly rate, our hourly amount has been in the 50 to $55 range. Our costs are up from previous years because of two reasons. One, the wages and benefit costs within the department are the primary expense, and because of the increase in health insurance these past few years, 
we've seen these numbers jump up a bit. Uh, two, the city took on a new position halfway through 2014 into 2015. They hired a detective who also serves as their student resource officer. This was done to support getting an SRO in our schools again and to increase the drug enforcement. We expect to have increased revenues over time that will offset these increased costs. The city has had an established police department for many years. This has allowed the city to build a capital slash equipment plan that is easily managed from year to year. We budget 20000 annually as part of our capital plan to cover planned expenses. The largest expenses are the vehicles. We purchase a new squad car every two years. The chief and detective cars are planned for as needed. Um, the vehicles, equipment, and computer system is our greatest expense. So she gave me the 2014, the 2015, and the 2016 actual. She didn't give me the 2017 budget. But um, as you can see there, if you just take last year, their operating expense was 601400 plus their capital. So they're... $620,000 of their expenses, and they take in just under 70, or just, yeah, under 70,000 in revenue. So their expenses are 551,512 a year in a, in a police department that's been established for a long time. Now they do 22 hours a day coverage. So it gives you the added coverage, but like I said, they've been around for a while. They have um, two full-time evening patrols, one daytime, and a full-time detective and one full-time chief. I don't know how many cars they have. Then I received this from the Howard Lake Police Department. They have eight officers, three full-time, five part-time. They have four cars. Um, Monday through Friday, they average about 18 hours a day coverage, and on the weekends, they just do 12 hours a day coverage. And then their budget is listed there below, showing 15, 16, and 2017 budget. So you can see, like, their 2017, they're budgeting about 365000 a year. Um, West Hampton Public Safety didn't even want to go down that route. They just said, <laughs> our budget is $1.7 million, and we have 10 full-time officers and two assist administrative assistants. That's all they gave us. <laughs> they didn't want to go any other, into any other details. So I just said some practical items to consider is in comparison, the city of Montrose would most likely be comparable to the city of Howard Lake for patrol purposes. Um, I think size-wise we're probably like, we have more residents than they have, but size-wise like for, you know, the area I think we're about the same. Um, and then as I said, as stated previously, these departments have been in existence for many years, so have built up their capital, their funds and their capital expenses where we would have none going into it. Um, some startup costs. I tried to um, come up with a few items that we would have to consider. Um, the main one would be a building to put somebody to put them in. Um, this one be considered secure. So we either have to do some kind of extensive work somewhere in this building, or we'd have to purchase a different building. Sean and I and I asked Sean and Justin what their thoughts were, and they said. Well, you could probably say 500000 but I would guess a lot more than that. So I just said 500000 <laughs> um, Cars, depending on how many we would buy, they're between forty-five and 50000 a car. And that's um, what I received from the county was, I think he said 47000 And that's, um, I think he said 40000 Except 47000 that was with the equipment and graphics on it. Um, the computer system, you have to have a computer system and the programs that go with it in the office and in the cars. So you're looking probably to get going, probably twenty to 25000 I did put the uniform cost per officer, that's what the county allows every year, 750 a year, so just to get started. But the initial, initial cost of the equipment, which I got from the county, is $6,700 just to equip an officer to get them started. So like if a new employee came in, yes, it would be the sixty-seven. Yes, so you you know, and you're talking. I mean, I don't, if you had a police department, you probably have to have at least four to five officers. I'm guessing because you have to be able to give them a break. Break and time off. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> it's work. Yeah. So you know, if you if you include that, um, so I just kind of added that up real quickly. It was like six hundred and forty-two thousand. I think I did four officers, um, plus like Howard Lake's budget of 365000 
So the first year you would be in operation, you'd be looking at over a million dollars to start a police department. Um, and I just said these are just the major items that would, would be needed in starting a police department. However, along with the initial startup costs, it's anticipated that the annual budget for a local police department would be about $100,000 more than what we would be paying at the 10 hours even. Because at three hundred sixty-five thousand, we'd be paying two hundred and sixty thousand to the county. So you're looking at about a hundred thousand dollars different on an annual basis, right? If we, uh, versus contracting. So I just said, well, having a local police department does have its advantages, which it does. Um, the cost of the city of Montrose to start a department and to maintain the department is more than the city can currently absorb without increasing taxes significantly. So. That's kind of what I come up with. Do you guys have any questions? Or? So the initial cost of equip, you know, equipment for an officer entails what? If so uniforms. Portable radio. Okay. Uh, the duty gear, uniforms. Uh, the initial issue is usually twelve hundred dollars. Uh, each officer, by state statute, is allowed a um, bulletproof vest. Uh, we absorb 50% of that, the state absorbs 50% of that, but that's uh, allowed up to $1,400. So portable radio alone is about thirty-five to $4,000 per portable radio. Um, we issue firearms and uh, everything goes along with the initial issue. So the big purchase would be the, the portable radio in there. Those numbers are just uh, what uh, Wright County does for yes. uniform reimbursements. Yes. You can check with other cities. Some cities do full uniform. I know there are cities that if a, a deputy needs a shirt, they give them the shirt that's all incorporated. But the larger departments like the sheriff's offices, we just give uniform allowances. Okay. Um, one thing I was going to say too is I did check with Annadale because like I said, their their revenue was like just under 70000 for the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is mainly um, state aid is 39000 where we only get 10000 because we contract. So they get thirty nine. So we get a big 30,000 increase. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 15,000 they get from their school district for having that uh, resource, officer. resource officer, which we wouldn't have in Montrose schools. Right. Um, they get a 20, about $2,500 back from the state for trading reimbursement. And they did about $6,900 in fines is all they did. So we would probably be looking at about the, we would be looking at the state aid and the fines. So we would maybe have an income of Forty-five thousand, or a revenue to offset our million something. Okay. And how they didn't give me any what they have the revenue. They didn't give me any revenue at all. So I'm guessing it's pretty minimal. So there really wasn't any other departments around. I mean, other smaller departments that I could really information from right. so I guess the question is um, you know that was kind of the discussion that night was then is it, is it worth going with our own local police department can we afford a local police department number one um, if you the first year to um, run a local police department if you're like at a, say a million one hundred thousand at about eleven hundred households you're looking at about a thousand dollars per household tax mm -hmm. to pay for that. <laughs> I don't want that. Um, so I mean, you know, it's. I think local police departments are probably great for the communities that have them, but you know, if we've been established. Yeah, if we've been established a long time ago, back when it wasn't, and we've got the capital costs built up because you know I, I didn't even include any kind of capital expense build up in that million. I mean, you know, you want to have something there, so when you have to start changing, you know, changing all these cars and that kind of stuff, you have the money, so you have to, you know, budget for that too. And I think Carl Lake doesn't budget a whole lot for theirs, because I'm sure they have a pretty good sized fund. So with having their, you know, a private police department, like their own, mm -hmm. and Annadale ranges from 50 to $55 an hour range, can they set their fee compared to how the county does it? I mean, where do all the numbers, where do they get the numbers compared to you guys? 
Um, but it's just an introduction. I introduce myself. My name is Todd Hoffman. I'm the Chief Deputy with the Wright County Sheriff's Office. Uh, when we go out and do these studies, uh, just so that the, the board's aware, um, this isn't the first time a study's been done. Delano has done uh, studies whether or not they want police departments, Monticello has done it, and we encourage and we participate in those studies. We give the information. So we're, we are not here today to discourage you from looking at a local police department. That being said, we don't comment or won't comment on Buffalo, Annandale, and Howard Lake, how, they, um, how they're set up, how they pay for their um, um, agencies. As a matter of fact, the other, the other one um, just into uh, um, south of us here, because we have to work with them every day. We don't want to have it seem like, okay, we're telling Montrose City Hall, hey, we can do the um, enforcement better than one of our, uh, one of our partner agencies. But what we have done is we will go outside. Uh, we have a list of, I believe, like six or seven other agencies outside of our area that have similar populations as Montrose, kind of look at their budgets and stuff. So uh, the, the primary or one of the, the things that the city councils typically uh, like and why they go to the uh, sheriff's offices is the economy of scale. You know, we have the larger department. We have the resources. We have all those. Um, um, things built in so as you grow larger some of those costs are diverted out amongst a, a larger percentage of your employees so those expenses go down and that's what we're here to we're able to um, afford the city's a, a cheaper rate than law enforcement coverage because of the economy of scale um, the other thing we want to present to the board is that if there are issues we, we, we of course want to be partners we're you know we're like um, police chiefs of 13 different cities. And right now we have 13 contracts. So our captains, our sergeants are like the police chiefs of those cities. They, they work with the board, they work with the uh, uh, city staff. Uh, we also have 18 township uh, uh, board of supervisors that, you know, we are the chiefs of police for those areas. And then we also have roughly, I think there's six school districts that we also contract for. So we you know, we are the chiefs of police for those law enforcement officers in their schools. So the communication is very important to us. Like, you know, each jurisdiction, each city is different. You know, Monticello, they have a real emphasis on traffic enforcement. They need the traffic enforcement, so we gear towards traffic there. You know, uh, it could be Coquille, not as much traffic enforcement, but they have other needs. So, you know, if, if there are certain things that the council is looking at that they feel that might not be done or uh, that they feel that could be done better, make sure you work with our staff, um, get the communication of the uh, sergeant, to the patrol lieutenant, to the patrol captain, um, so that we can address some of those concerns. And uh, oftentimes, like law enforcement, it is very um, emotionally driven. People want to be safe and secure, at least, or at least have the feeling that they're safe and secure which draws a lot of emotion. So a lot of this is perception. You know, we hear, no matter where you go, uh, whether you're in a, a local police department or sheriff's office, it's either I don't see the cops around or I see too many cops. Why, you know, why, why are there so many cops? Every time I drive down Highway 55, Highway 12, or I see a squad car, you got too many cops. Or you hear it, I don't see enough cops. So it's, it, it's a lot of it's perception, but if there actually is an issue, if the uh, board or uh, staff, if they have dates, times, locations, that's very helpful, uh, helpful for us to address and to research. The general statements, yeah, you guys know, I mean, uh, if, if you get a complaint, in, in a generality, a complaint, it's hard to pinpoint, you know, where that's coming from, how do we address a general complaint? Uh, it's stereotypes and stuff like that. Those are harder to address, but if there's any information that uh, I was provided to you with regards to our contract rate, how we come up with those numbers. Um, also the monthly reports, our yearly reports, if there's any issues with them, the questions, concerns, by all means, give us a call. We'll come down here. We'll meet you up at our office or talk to you on the phone or email or whatever. We are here, I just had this conversation with the county board last week. We have to guess what you want, what information you want. Um, but we need to do a better job of asking you, okay, 
this is what we can do. These are some of the things we can provide you. Um, I, I believe one of the questions was um, the possibility of having a uh, police commission or some other type of format or entity where we can have discussions, uh, general discussions on crime and questions and some type of a format where those questions can be answered on whether it's a quarterly, you know, semi-annual or whatever type of uh, time frame you would like. We've been more than happy to do that. Monticello started with the police commission. That ran for several years. It kind of dissolved into like a quarterly meeting with the city staff. Uh, Clearwater, I believe, still has a or they had quasi police commission. At, after a while, you know, they see that you know they don't want to be the supervisor of the individual officers, so they kind of rely uh, uh, let that fall back on the sheriff's office again. But anything we can do to help you make that determination, if there's more information that you would like with regards to the cost of actually operating a law enforcement agency. We're more than happy to give you those information. If you'd like a larger group or a, a committee to actually look at that, get a, you know, we find you did an awesome job, by the way, doing all that research with all those numbers. But there are a lot of other hidden costs. We talked about training issues. Every time you send an officer to training, they're off the street. So you have to either going to build in more relief factor, or you're just not going to have an officer on the street. So. Any information we can give you, we'd be more than happy to, uh, to work with you on that. The rate you're talking about mm -hmm. was their old rate. The their current, rate. yeah, their current rate. If you look on the bottom of that page, 68, 68 in 2016. Okay. Oh, and the okay. and the county is that was at 69.50 in 2016 or 2017. Oh, so I mean, so yeah, in 2016 yeah. the county was at 67 dollars. So Andale's hourly rate actually is higher than. And that's just their hourly rate based on what they're budgeting, what they say they're going to spend. Right. That's where they get theirs from. So they go through and do their budget, what they think they're going to need, and then they, they said it's based, they know. So our biggest complaint that I get is seeing officers sitting at City Hall for hours on end or sitting up at the VFW or whatever. So I did actually contact uh, Captain Dan with the time and everything, and he gave me back a, the whole timeline. So, like, if there's a, this was a drug um, incident, so that was like an hour and a half report time. What's like an average traffic stop? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, that specific uh, information, that was great. That was good information, and we were able to research that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sheriff's Office, what we did several years ago, and what you're finding a lot of local police departments do, is the technology is increasing. So four or five years ago, if you would have asked us, hey, this officer uh, made a drug arrest or drug complaint, they would have actually had to leave Montrose, go up to Buffalo, to our office, and actually complete the reports, turn in the reports. So what we've done now with the, uh, we've got Zerker Technologies, they are actually, instead of going to Buffalo to hand in the reports and stuff, they're actually doing them in their squads. Mm -hmm. So they're actually in the city. The, uh, you may be referring to like downtime, what appears to be downtime, and, and don't get me wrong, are, the, are there deputies, are cops taking breaks, sitting on the side of the road taking breaks? Absolutely, I, you know, we're, you know, they, they're running radar for an hour. Well, if nobody breaks the speed limit, well, then they're sitting there for an hour and it looks like they're not doing anything. But um, I still do it every time I see a squad car. What do I do? I slow down and tap my brakes. So even if I'm going 35 through town, if I see a squad sitting at reds, I'm going to slow down even if I'm going the speed limit. So it's, again, a lot of it's perception. If we have an it, if we have a deputy that is, you know, part five miles out of town on a dead end road doing reports. Yeah, we're gonna address that situation. If they're gonna be doing reports, they should be doing it somewhere, you know, w within the city limits visible. Do, you know, there's, you know, some officers, they'll let's say there's officer safety concerns. You know, if they're parked right on Highway 12 and they're doing a 45 minute report, if they're focused on doing the report, then if somebody walks up to them, they don't notice them walking up. So, you know, they have to weigh those type of things. Traffic stops, if you're just making a traffic stop and you're just giving the person a verbal warning, it could take anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes, depending on how fast the returns come back on the computer. Are there any uh, 
uh, suspense files or anything possibly has some warrants you have to verify the identity uh, those type of things so everything is it's it's a uh, it's a range you know we if we could say you know on this domestic situation we don't want you taking more than 35 minutes on a domestic right. yeah so it, it, everything's a variable You asked about traffic stops. If a citation is issued mm -hmm. uh, from the time the stop is initiated until the time the report is complete, it would take 20 to, 20 to 25, 30 minutes to, okay. to get the ticket, get it downloaded into the report, actually type up the report from the time you make the traffic stop till the time you clear with the report done. It could take a half hour. Okay. So obviously when the initial call is made to the end of the call, all the reports have to be done at that time, right? I mean, you can't, like this incident, he couldn't have done it an hour, you know? But we just had this, we have uh, monthly uh, uh, sergeants meetings, and uh, again, this is a management. If you have your own uh, police department, these are some of the questions or some of the issues you have that you may have to deal with. Um, there are some that like to procrastinate. So <laughs> if I have two or three calls during the day, instead of, you know, right after you take the call, do your report. Some of them don't do that. Some okay. of them wait till towards the end of the shift. Well, if they're starting to wait till the end of the shift, three, now it uh, goes into overtime if they go uh, about, you know. So I just brought up in the sergeant's meeting again, hey, if the officer has time after the call is done, do your report. Obviously, if there's a high priority call waiting, if you've got, you know, uh, something in progress, a domestic, a burglary in progress, a theft in progress, or something, yeah, the report can wait a little bit later in the shift, but don't wait till the end of your shift because, again, there's a cost issue involved with that if you're if you're going into overtime. So uh, we would we would prefer that they do it as, as soon as possible. Plus, a lot of the information is fresh in their mind at that right. time. Right. Prior to getting this technology, we allowed a three-day, 72-hour window to complete um, reports, with the exception, I think we had about 12 or 15 of them that were mandated by end of shift, any in custodies, um, business burglaries, residential burglaries, things like that. There was an exception list as to every rule. With the new technology that we have in our squads and the ability to do everything right in our squad car now, we do mandate that all reports are done by end of shift with uh, um, unless you have supervisor approval and then that has to go into the note section of that specific report why the report so, wasn't done yeah why it wasn't done they're going to do a follow-up and we've just learned with this technology it's wonderful because we do like chief deputy said we wear the hats of about 13 police chiefs and we get calls from cities all the time mm -hmm. hey we uh, we had a call somebody reported that this was going on can you give us some information under that 72 hour window we weren't always able to get that information right now if you call me tomorrow morning about an incident that happened at eight o'clock you know tonight it's a it's at my fingertips yeah, and the report is generated so mm -hmm. it is a really nice thing and with the technology and the squads that was a beautiful example um and and again it, it i think that it helps um what we're trying to accomplish but with that particular one the deputy actually did a really nice job on that not only was the report done he sent a bulletin out to all the partners yep. for an extra patrol mm -hmm. and he emailed our narcotics sergeant given the information and so we do have a really nice system in place about sharing information so and not that you couldn't find fault somewhere else but that was a good example yeah, that, that the deputy good. did follow through with mm -hmm. what he needed to do you're still you're still dealing with humans and there's gonna right there's gonna be errors <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, yeah. yes So I, I um, worked up a couple of numbers too. I um, on the page where I had for 2018, eight hours a day at $72 an hour, or 10 hours a day. If you were to go to 10 hours a day, um, based on the number of households, I, I just keep saying 1,100. I think it's actually more than that, but it's close enough for now. If you did 10 hours a day um, at 1,100 households your increase would be $55 a year per household for two more hours of coverage a day. But then not knowing how many more households we've added in the right. past year, it's probably, it probably is going to be closer probably to closer 30, to 20, 30 dollars. Yeah, yeah, the most because um, the um, tax capacity goes up, you know, yeah, new houses, your tax capacity goes up, but it's based on that, so. Yeah, but eight or 10, 12 houses on there. 
I wish. There's four going up right next to me. Yeah, there's oh, quite a few. Are come out, yeah. come out in my neighborhood. There's in the past three years, we've probably added 50, four, 40 to 50 houses at least. Yeah. So yeah, we've added quite a few. So I was just using that as a you know like as a, like under household. There's actually more than that, I'm sure. Plus, it's that's not what your taxes are based on. They're based on your value of your home and tax capacity keeps going up because. You know, the value keeps going up, and with the addition of the houses, it'll go up. It went up last year. I think it was wasn't it close to hundred thousand or something. I think it went up last year. So, was there any question as to why there was uh, a, uh, a request or a, a suggestion about increasing contract hours? Did, you, did the board have questions on why we were asking for that? Well, we what was the main reason. I'm sorry. What was the main reason? A uh, main reason again is. Um, population again uh, uh, as your population goes up and what comes do happen and I believe like some of the comments were we don't see officers okay um, part of the reason why you, you don't see officers is you have substantial blocks of time during the day where there's no coverage you know it, like the two to I think one of your main blocks that you're not uh, covered right now is two 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you're not going to see a lot of law enforcement. You'll still see the area cars drive by once in a while and patrol through, but you don't have coverage during that time. Uh, during the morning, also uh, rush hour traffic, people going into work. There's a period of time in there where you don't have law enforcement coverage. Um, I can give uh, um, your staff this. Um, this was provided by one of our patrol lieutenants that did. Other cities with your uh, close uh, population levels, about uh, the hours how many they have, and they range from 40 hours to 18 hours and that, uh, a day, and that's the average population of 2,900. So within there, there's like a 40 to 18 hour coverage. Now, if we're not we're not asking you to go to 24 hour coverage. You know, would that be ideal? Probably, but you know, we're, we're hoping the baby steps. We're hoping to merge are um, leverage those hours with uh, Waverly so that both city is seeing you know some bang for their buck and being able to spread um, a car between the two cities since you're so closely aligned uh, so we're trying to take advantage of some of those things so that we can still provide the residents of both Montrose and Waverly with the law enforcement coverage but we're not uh, having such an impact with uh, each residents uh, taxes and stuff like that so um, that's the main reason uh, you, you're getting people that are moving in from the metro area uh, that are moving into your community and they're expecting metro type services when they move into these places i, I live in st michael and you know we have an influx of you know people from the metro they they, they expect you know all these amenities that they've had in the metro on the rural areas and you know, we've got people that's never seen a farm before you know all of a sudden their their development butts up to the farm and why am i smelling manure well you, you're there you're still in a rural area you, know, been you, don't, under, you don't understand that so we've, been there. Know, we've had feedlot issues we've had all those other things so we have to as a government entity we have to adapt to our clientele our constituents and so we've got to you know if they want more coverage uh, fire departments. You know, how come Montrose doesn't have a three-story ladder truck? We had one in Maple Grove. Why not? Two-story. Why not? Two <laughs> well, you know, well, so gets asked more than you would think. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, there are these expectations that us as a government entity, but we also have to be mindful of the taxes and you know, uh, uh, taxing our residents out of. Uh, out of their home so that's why we came up with that two hours for Montrose two hours for Waverly hopefully bridging that one time frame and in the future if the, if the, if the city council if you still if you continue to have more growth in some of your developments and the tax bases there you know we may have you know five years down the road ten years down the road uh, your population starts pushing 3,500 4,000 5,000 you, you may want to at least entertain to look at, you know, 24-hour coverage. It's, it's that's the route they're going. You know, does it mean that you're crime-ridden? 
oh my gosh, we have 24 hour coverage, we must have a ton of burglaries, ton of domestics, ton of thefts. Not necessarily, but again, it's that perception. It's the, you know, people want to feel safe and secure. Um, people want to have their three story ladder trucks in case there's a fire in your two story house. So. I think this was probably a combination of the, the perfect storm. I think Captain Anselman did a pretty good job of explaining it when we were down uh, to your meeting in May, but we we always look at numbers administratively. That's that's what we try to do. And we really saw that that, that influx of calls between 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock when there is no coverage is really creeping up, you know, quite high. And, you know, just to explain again, you can always expect that the times during the day that a deputy is in town, those numbers should be higher because it, uh, it accounts for self-initiated activity, traffic stops, things that they encounter on their own, maybe a park check or a business check, things that they generate themselves. So we would expect that certain times that the deputy is in town should be higher. What caught our eye is that time from 2 o'clock in the afternoon until 6 o'clock where there is no car dedicated to Montrose and Waverly, yet those numbers are really creeping high where we're having outside our area cars coming into town and handling those calls. And so that's, that's why we thought that it, would, it might be the perfect time to approach. And you can see from about 7 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock in the morning just outside of those hours, you know, those numbers are, are starting to creep up too. Um, but those can be handled by the area car coming into town. So we just kind of thought that this was, you know, the perfect time to, you know, we don't want to get too far behind the trends when we consider our population increases. I think uh, when I was hired in, in 1997, I was number 81 or 82. We're up to 140 now. So as the population of the county increases, we always have to look to the forecast and see can we stay on top of this? Because we don't want to get to the position where all of a sudden we, and not that we would forget about you guys as our, as our contract, but all of a sudden nothing gets said and we come to a city council meeting and say, you need to increase 12 hours a day. You know, we don't want to catch you that off guard. So we like looking at numbers and we like taking a look at everything as a whole and saying, this might be a really good benefit for you. Sean likes numbers, I don't like numbers. <laughs> <laughs> And so that's that's where you know the partnership. You guys do have a really unique situation here, and I think that it has worked really well. It's been Montrose Waverly ever since I've started in in the mid '90s. So you guys do have a unique um, uh, partnership, and uh, by by splitting that, obviously Montrose does have have the bulk of it. Um, but with that partnership and two hours split two ways, you would basically be able to to increase that much that much more. I think. That's evidently why Waverly is quite interested in us to go along with the two hour yeah. additional. There would be 16 hours of coverage then between the two of us, so we've, you know, we've covered 16 hours. And, so I think they would go to, they would be six and we would be 10, but Correct. we're so close, like you said that. So we basically be getting 16 hours of coverage a day for it. And that's the same amount of coverage that Delano gets too, just to kind of compare apples to apples a little bit. And Delano, having one deputy over there, they're busier than crap all the time it seems like even when the contract car isn't there the area car is going in our southeast area car morning and afternoon i think i shared this with you the last time i was here in maine our southeast area car 4110 and 4130 are the busiest two cars that we have in the county by far and that is covering that's that seven o'clock or six o'clock in the morning till nine or ten o'clock when you guys uh, get some coverage into town they're splitting their time between Delano and Montrose. Rockford, Rockford's the same way. So, again, it's not you, you guys aren't unique to the situation. We just, uh, we saw a, a trend of calls creeping up and we don't want to just land blast you with some exorbitant, you know, number. If we can work it up in increments as to what we're seeing. And again, this is information we want to share with you. You, you should be in the loop as to to where your dollars and cents are going. And we all want to be good stewards. It's much easier to take baby steps than this time. Absolutely. So if we were to increase it by two hours, um, would that give us more community policing? Which means, you know, our, what we want to see is more our officer here more often. The same officer, because it seems like every other month we have a new officer that comes out here. 
One, I'll speak to that real briefly. I don't want to take up a ton of your time. Uh, Industry-wide, uh, turnover rate in law enforcement is about 10 to 15 percent nationwide. You know, some areas there's 20 percent, some are a little bit lower. Um, matter of fact, Anoka County just had an article in the Star Tribune on Monday. They're at 50 percent turnover rate for the sheriff's office. So uh, people just change careers; they move. We try to keep deputies in the same area. We do a, uh, every year. They do a big shift in uh, for um, their times. We still dictate the areas and stuff like that because of union contracts. You got a the time issue. So anyways, um, we do try to keep people in the same area so they become familiar with the uh, businesses, their residents, um, who's doing what in the city. So yes, we, we, we definitely try to do that. Um, are we going to say that you're always going to have that person in there, whether it can be a year or two years? No, I, we can't guarantee that. Um, and there are, to be honest with you, some deputies are better suited for different areas. You may have a brand new person that is gun haul, likes to write traffic citations. We've had this issue. We throw them into a small town and they are just they're tagging everyone. Which, you know, it's, 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 it's traffic enforcement, so, you know, it's, it's critical, but you know, that might not be the exact style for that community. So they may be pulled out of there in eight months and say, hey, Monticello really likes traffic. <laughs> you, know, you know, some yeah, moderation. Right? So, you know. <laughs> and you guys did get switched up this year. I took over the schedule in October. I did switch you up earlier this year, but right now you have two fantastic guys. I know that um, Michelle, uh, Mayor, you, you mentioned that the first meeting, you were surprised. I was also surprised when we pulled the traffic stop number, 367 traffic stops of 2016, 1.008 a, a day. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a little on the light side. Since taking over in the patrol division, I have, we can't set the quote, I can't say right. you need 20 tickets uh, or 50 tickets on an annual basis. I can't, we have to really bridge that carefully but the general expectations of traffic enforcement, we don't give citation books to the postman. We are, we are called to enforce traffic code, and that's part of our job. So we're trying to get those numbers up, and so I, I agree with that point that that's a little bit low, um, but I can tell you the other one that was a little bit surprising was the number of DWI arrests last year. We have already had the amount of DWI arrests this year so far that we did all of last year so those <laughs> those traffic those traffic <laughs> numbers good. are well, coming up <laughs> just because it's we're, we're just, and, and just like any business we right. we you change some leadership there's different styles there's a different approach but we are trying to increase just general expectations be prepared for like you spoke about the dwis you may get calls from certain businesses about you know about the increased number of DWIs and so we've had that in the other mm -hmm. other cities oh, and stuff. Yeah. Why are you sitting on my business? Why is it? it's like well, well not really, it's just that stuff tends to be associated with certain right. things. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. Especially now that we have the seven days a week of call, you'll probably see it more, but yeah. that was my next question too, was if that would increase because we only had one stop a month. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that, that was that was the other point that I wanted to make. Uh, Chief Deputy mentioned, you know, Monticello tried a police commission, and what the city council um, came to realize is they had independent people selected throughout the community, but really didn't they didn't have any constituents that they answered to. So they were getting the information from us, passing recommendations onto the city council, who in turn had to answer for it. And so the city council said, you know what? Why don't we bypass the the whole police commission, we want to hear from the sheriff's office and we want that dialogue back and forth. So quarterly, we go up and do a seven or eight page PowerPoint presentation to the Monticello City Council. They give us about 20 minutes on their agenda. We have a conversation back and forth with council members. And uh, I think that over the last few months, we've proven we're willing to come down and talk to you guys at any time you want and, and answer your questions. 
And any time that you guys have an email, I, uh, I can give you my business card as well before. I'm a patrol captain, so if you have a patrol, I think Dan's been taking the ball to him, but you have his contact information, certainly reach out and I will do whatever I can to get you that information. But we do those. So you, you asked about an increase in you know the community policing type mm -hmm. of things. That, some of that dialogue comes from you. What is your expectations of us being in your town? We want to be good partners with you guys. That's what we always strive to do. And so it's it's a matter of, of meeting those needs um, with obviously there's a certain amount of things that we have to do and there's a certain percentage of the population that we have to deal with um, but discretionary time there's there's there can be some days there's not any discretionary time other days there's a great deal of discretionary time so what are they doing in that discretionary time some of that might be dictated by you and your expectations of the officers in your town. Being that I grew up here, I'm used to seeing the Wright County officers getting out and talking with the kids. You know, my kids being almost 30, um, the officers used to come up and hand baseball cards and just chit chat. And that, that's the kind of thing that we want to see here, is the officers getting more involved with the community. So, And I do see a lot more police presence in the neighborhoods compared to what we saw months ago before we started talking more with you guys so and that and that's why those that's why that dialogue is so important mm -hmm. because we recognize your needs or expectations as mm -hmm. a city we pass that along we just uh, chief deputy mentioned yesterday we had a command staff meeting with all of our patrol sergeants um, I, I delegated a project for this city specifically to the, to the patrol sergeants that take care of this district yeah. so absolutely and with the community policing thing too from my experience with it, when I worked the town car, it was natural for me to be involved in the community. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we, our deputies don't live in town. A lot of them don't live in the towns where they work. So it takes a little bit more fostering by city councils, residents and stuff, to make that deputy feel a part of the community. Right. Um, the deputy can only do so much. And hearing it from command staff is one thing. Hearing it from a general citizen, whole nother ball game. Um, it it kind of reinforces why we're out doing that job. Um, and community policing is probably one of the biggest things we all do out there, essentially. And it's a very abstract concept. Remember most of your most of your law enforcement officers nowadays that are working patrol are in that uh, age from about 20, 22 to 23 to 30. So the, the concept of why they went into law enforcement probably wasn't community policing because they didn't even know community, what is community policing. To you, it's like you know, getting out playing hoops with the young kids. Mm -hmm. uh, to a businessman, it's hey, you know, walk in in front of my store, come and say hi. You know, at night maybe jiggling the door to make sure my uh, doors unlocked. When I worked down, it was me locking the post office at night. That was the community policing last <laughs> night. Um, so yeah, so it's, you know, to try to, you know, it, 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 it can be taken as just a buzzword, but we really try to make sure that the deputies have that uh, sense of uh, belonging and, uh, and, and pride in the area that they're working and, you know, get to know your residents. I know it was just a couple months ago, there was a kid on the uh, side of the road here that he broke his chain uh, on, uh, on the road, and I ended up driving him through the bike in the back of my uh, trunk and <laughs> drove them home the other day, you know, I think it was like a month, month and a half ago. So we try to do that. We try to instill those things on there. So it's, not everyone's good at it, you know, but we want to make sure that if, if we can give them the tools to succeed in your town and you're happy with the service, your citizens are happy with the service, that's what our ultimate goal is. And we encourage all of our deputies to come out and stop at the council meeting. So if they're not, we want to hear about that. But uh, we, we encourage them to, to engage with you guys. And it's always nice if you feed them a couple of questions and they feel like they're part of it because then they almost feel like they're part of your, your mm -hmm. team and they feel like they're a part of it. And we, we, we try to keep, and, and, I, and again, I changed you up a couple of months ago, but my intention is you're gonna have the same two deputies for the remainder of the year unless they're on vacation or calling sick. Um, but we encourage them to take take ownership because we know it's it's just as important having school resource officers kids talk and we learn a, a lot of valuable information through that dialogue that our school resource officers are able to develop through those relationships 
same thing with the with the uh, cop in town. Uh, if you get to know people, people are going to be more apt to share information with you. We encourage them to, to take a burglary case, to take a theft case. We don't want to just kick it all upstairs to a detective. We want the town cop being in a part of the community, getting out and talking to people, meeting people, getting information that way. And I think we're, 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 we're pretty successful at it. So. As a neighborhood watch group, you know, like the ones that are over by you guys and smallers and such, do they do like regular meetings or anything? Or they have the, I know they have their own private Facebook thing that they get together on, but. But they don't actually do like meetings, so I was going to say that would probably be good. Unless they do it, I don't know. I can just check tonight. Yeah, I didn't know if they held meetings, but I'm guessing, you know, if the area or the town officer would stop if they had questions mm -hmm. or anything. If there's any other neighborhood watch groups. Yeah, because they're the only ones right now. And that's started. Mm -hmm. You see, Michelle, that you do see more I patrolling do. And, and, in the neighborhoods. And the neighbors have commented. Oh, there they go again. I'm like, yes, they're here. They're in towns, they're in the neighborhoods. So that's what we wanted. So yeah, I've seen a, a bigger increase. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, I don't know the officer's name. That's in town, or we have two of them? Yep, Andrew Lundin and Clayton Oswegan. Because they've been actually talking at council meetings. That's good. They've given us some yep. updates so yep. on things that they're working on. So that yep. was nice to see that. They're too. actually uh, they're doing fantastic. So yeah. it's two really good guys. They're new, right? I mean, like new. new. Uh, Andrew's been here slightly longer, but Clayton is when he was assigned in town. This was this is his first week, and so you guys are breaking him in. And, oh, uh, so, to start out. But he is uh, <laughs> meeting, guy. He's meeting all expectations. He's, okay. he's doing a fantastic job. Uh, Self-initiated activity is probably mm -hmm. higher than his peer group, and so he is, he's not shying away. He's he's digging in, but I think that he's not being heavy-handed in any sense of the the word. I think that he's got a really good mix going. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew, I think, is a little bit more reserved, but uh, very good guy. Doing doing very well. Okay. Do you guys have anything? Thank you for coming short notice. Really appreciate it, you guys. Yes, very much appreciate it. No, we're not. We're not. Okay, there you go. So, um, I think you'll have to put on the agenda for July. Appreciate it. Because the contract comes up in August. In August. So we'll have to talk about it in July and we do budget um, to get approved at the August meeting for September or at the September meeting. But you know it'll be so it'll be on the agenda for in July to whether we want to increase or not. Yeah, so we know what to budget for. Okay. And so that they know what to con what to do with the contract. So I have something that kind of goes along with it from an emergency management and fire department standpoint. Um, from an emergency management standpoint, the two hours is fantastic. Um, from a fire department standpoint, the two hours is fantastic. Um, the city of Montrose has been spoiled for the last hundred years. Um, plus, I can probably even say. Um, we've always had a group of firefighters who live and work in town and were able to leave. That era is being discontinued um, very quickly, unfortunately. Um, Mike has been around in the department for 36 years now. He makes 80 to 90 percent of the calls. When and if he retires, there goes our daytime firefighter. Because there's many a times where it's me and him getting on a truck. I hope not to work nights my entire life, probably. So if I transition to day shift, that makes me unavailable for day stuff. Um, and well, we have some people that are spread out, uh, Matt, for example, he's up at the orchard, takes him 10 minutes to get back into town. Um, the sooner we can get some sort of first responder on scene, whether it's police, fire, um, in some of these instances, medicals, fire calls, things like that, the better the outcome of the totality happens. It kind of comes down to what kind of a price tag you want to put on somebody's life or their livelihood and their property and stuff. Um, you know, if we can get a life-saving event to happen, that's fantastic. All sheriff's cars are equipped with AEDs. Nine times out of ten, if there is a car
car in Montrose, they're beating us to these medicals. Um, it's the area cars, the times when we have those gaps, when we're there way before the cops, and a lot of times we cancel the cops altogether. Um, and our response time is phenomenal on the fire department side. Some of the other departments are much slower than us. Um, so that's kind of the piece that I wanted to kind of put a bug into everybody's ear is we're going to have to start thinking about ways to manage the daytime gap of our fire service and our emergency medical service in the community. Um, and I don't know what that looks like. There's many different options out there. Um, there's duty crew settings. There's you know one or two full-time personnel, um, part-time personnel. And it goes anywhere from you know paying a full-time fire chief 130,000 like Albertville is to having two or three guys work duty crew, but you gotta pay them and you gotta figure out the best way to make it work because they still have to have a primary job. This isn't gonna support them and their family because there's no benefits, there's no insurance, um, things along those lines. So I see this coming sooner rather than later and I would like to continue having it be a discussion now rather than when we start getting eight, 900 calls a year and we're burning guys out left and right and now we have to do something and start from square one. Is, does it need to happen today? Absolutely not. But it is something that I foresee happening in the future. This year is kind of an abnormal year for our call load. It's been very quiet. Um, but Delano is the same way. Last year they ran 708 calls. They're only at 260 right now. So it's not just Montrose. It's all throughout everything. So, so adding two hours of police coverage is a lot better than adding a hundred thousand dollar police chief, police full time fire, fire chief. chief. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and that gives us the coverage from that 2 in the afternoon till 6 at night when there's nobody around. And, and Only you know, if, if, if Mike were to retire some, I would feel much more comfortable going to a medical myself knowing that there's a cop going to be there or coming. They can help. We're way more trained. We're more, way more experienced medically than the deputies and stuff. But they can still help. They can function. Um, whereas if it's just me, okay, now i got to do a report, take blood pressure, treat trauma, do this, that, or the other thing. And a lot of it you just can't do all by yourself, so. Sorry. Don't I think okay. leave my card. So right. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, thank you. So from an overall perspective on emergency management side of things, and that's something too that you would lose um, if you went with your own police department that I forgot to kind of fill in is, right now, yes, I'm your emergency manager, but I more so just kind of liaise a little bit. Steve Berg up at the county, he does 98% of everything essentially. Um, it's still nice to have the local person here that can do the operational standpoint, but, and I don't know if Annandale, Buffalo, um, Howard Lake get the services that these contract cities get with Steve Berg and now his deputy director as well. Um, he does phenomenal work, he does a lot of work, um, and I don't think he ever sleeps. So um, there's a lot of a lot of very positive things for the two hours. Are there negatives? Absolutely, there are. Um, you you will hear people saying there's too much cops in town now. They're not doing enough. We have this. Um, the big flip side is if you want the community policing, if you want us out playing basketball with the kids, handing out baseball cards, things like that. Now I can't make a traffic stop. So now your stats are going to be skewed, essentially. Um, it, it, it's a trade-off, and the local deputies have to balance that out and try and figure out what works. And that's something that they have to do themselves. And a lot of times it comes down to what the atmosphere is in the town and how they're getting treated, how they're reacting to things. Most of these deputies are on the Facebook pages of the neighborhoods. Um, and that scares them big time. We have a lot of young deputies in the sheriff's office right now. Um, and just part of our daily intelligence is to look at Facebook sometimes because you can find a lot of good stuff on Facebook. And when there's bad mouthing or bashing and stuff like this going on, it shies them away from doing anything. So then it takes more work for deputies like me, an area car, where I'm dealing with these younger deputies and trying to push them and things like that, 
it makes it harder to push them to get results that communities and admin and everything are looking for. So a lot of it is just fostering that relationship between our town deputies and the you know, political offices, the city staff, the community residents, things along those lines, making them feel welcome, feeling part of the community. I think I was the last long-term deputy here in town. I spent two and a half years working town. Um, and since then, it's been pretty much every year we're getting a new deputy. And that has a lot to do with how they're treated by citizens and community and a lot of the turnover rate too. It's not the most desirable shift to be working. Guys either want to work nights or days. They don't want to work power swing shift. So there's nothing you can really do about that. But um, some guys absolutely love working the area. They love taking the calls. They hate dealing with the politics. Some people love dealing with the politics, hate taking the calls. So there's no middle ground with some of it, unfortunately. Monticello did a study back in, I mean, it's an old study, it was like 1995, but it was still had some good information in it. Um, and one of the things they mentioned too, it was their police commission did a study, kind of the same, you know, local, going local police department or staying with the county. And one of the things they mentioned in there was um, local police departments, good and bad, because local police departments, you get to know the officers, and the officers get to know the people in the community but then you run into people saying it's favoritism because that's their friend. Whereas when you stay with the county, you don't have that because they change. So it's, it's good and it's bad. It's great that they get to know everybody and get to know your community. But then again, if they get to know somebody too close, we had a deputy that used to be here in town here that was spent a lot of time at our wastewater plant with our previous wastewater operator and was good friends and people were always wondering what he was doing down there. So, you know, it's, it's he was here for a while and got to know the wastewater operator and got to be too good of friends and was there all the time. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, you know. It's and if you look at like the Howard Lake info that Wendy got too, so they have three full-time officers, one being their chief, the other two being their nighttime officers. The chief rarely patrols. He does admin work. Mm -hmm. Same with Annandale. So there's one of your full-time positions you're rarely going to see out on the road. Maybe he'll make it a lap once a day, if that. Um, and then you have administrative assistant costs. So Wendy does like a lot of the fire department administrative costs. Much money out of the fire department budget goes to pay for when part of Wendy's salary. Um, same with like parks and planning, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you'd either have to probably hire another administrative assistant and get things going. Um, but the, the numbers with the staff there are kind of skewed too with those PDs because that chief, the chiefs, I mean, no offense to Chief Deputy Hoffman and uh, Captain Derringer. I, they've been my supervisor since I started at the sheriff's office, but uh, they haven't, Sean hasn't seen a patrol car for maybe three or four years, Chief Deputy Hoffman, um, I've been working there for 10 years and he's been in CID or investigations or sergeant up in the office since then. So they just, they don't make the patrols. That's why they hire boots to the ground essentially. It's a very tough decision to figure this out and stuff. So glad I'm not in your shoes. So. But I am willing to help out, answer any questions in any way that I can to help foster things. I know sometimes it can be intimidating having them here and things along those lines. And obviously my views are going to be a little skewed one way. I'm not going to hide that from you. Um, I love where I work. I love doing what I'm doing. And I'm not planning on changing it anytime soon. So. You said you wanted to sort of get the days. Don't they alternate the shifts or don't they do that? No, nope. so once a year we bid our times. Um, so I, for the last several years, I, I bid 2200 to 0600, so the dog watch shift. Um, and because of my seniority where I'm at, I have about 67 to 70 people underneath me. I can pretty much work whatever shift I want, um, except for the day shift right now. So usually your most senior guys take the day shift. So I thought they used to alternate months. No, um, months month. a lot of a lot of PDs like Buffalo PD. Um, so they work in a quarter system. One of their quarters has to be on their off bid. So if they bid days, that one one quarter of their choosing has to either be afternoons or nights. So it gets them a taste of everything. Yeah. It keeps them a little bit more well rounded. However, with the way that the sheriff's office works with the contracts and with the number of people, it, that would go over well. Plus, 
that cities like to see the same officers and stuff like that. They like the same routine. They like to kind of expect what that deputy is going to do type thing. You know, is it going to be a, a hard deputy who's going to stop everybody and write everybody a ticket? Or is it going to be the deputy who stops everybody and just gives warnings, which merits good things too. So. And I did check, um, it was mentioned at the last, or at the May Council meeting about Delano possibly doing their own police department. And I checked with Delano and they have absolutely no interest in whatsoever of having their own police department. I talked to the city administrator and he said, no, we're staying with Wright County. And Waverly has no, no, um, I talked to County Homes, their mayor, and they just want to stay with the county. They would like us to do the two hours and they would do the two hours, but they have no intentions of doing their own. So our only choice if we did our a police department would be our own. So there's nobody else around that wants to play with us. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you can answer these questions, but um, you know, reading in the paper, whether to be No, I can't. <laughs> I'll just stop it right there because yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of expected that. All right. So, so you can't vote or anything, but I don't know if you want to have a little discussion as to what you guys want to do in July. So when it comes to the July meeting, you kind of, I mean, what each one of your, what your thoughts are, or your ideas or not. I mean, you can still discuss it at the July meeting, but I don't know if you want to kind of throw it out there now, what your thoughts are, why, your pros and cons, or what your, if there's anything else you want us to look into, or. So I know, well, everybody except Boyd has Facebook, so I don't know, Boyd, if you heard that. Um, there was a poll essentially put on Facebook about. I have no idea what you're talking. What poll? You don't either. What Facebook? But okay, what, so what on the community poll? of Montrose page, there was a poll put on there about this specifically. Basically, people were to comment A, B, or C. A was keep everything the exact same. I think mm -hmm. keep everything the exact same. Don't change hours. Don't change. You know, we don't want our taxes to. B was increase two hours. No, A was increase two hours. And that's what I thought. Same, same, so yeah. Was whatever. Yeah, so A was. Whole thing. Hmm? It's got three bolts. Oh. Okay. Right now. So A was increase hours <laughs> Just because <laughs> they want more place in the community. B was keep everything the exact same. Do not make any changes. And then C was I would like to pursue other options, basically, or look into other options. And there was quite a quite a bit of comments put on there. Um, Here's what, did you well, what kind of numbers? Uh, a, which was increased, has eight. Eight people mm -hmm. said increased. B, which is stay the same as forty nine. I already added it up. Ah, was just stay the same. And C was three, which was. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. And how, how many there are? But, how many residents of Montrose have Facebook that are of the? We, don't, we can't okay. really. You, you how many people? How many people saw this? So well, that's sixty poll. people. Right. And that's there are there are. I, I can count twelve people on here right now that don't live in the city. I was just gonna say. Right. Oh, yeah. There's a portion of them that are not even Montrose residents, so we okay. can't really go with that. I just want to make sure that Lloyd was aware that some, there was a poll put on Facebook about this so because he may hear about it. Even though which way we go, even though there's 49, 49 that want us to stay the same, twelve of them don't count because they don't. At have least. Twelve. Uh, right. That's and then people that I know that I can say yes. Not from A to B though. Correct. If you take away 12 from well, 49. So that's still only 60, still, children, yeah. that's that's still that's 60, 60 people, 60 people of 3,100. And it's not a valid and sampling. How many, how many people saw poll. it? When, when what was about, this poll? Over the weekend. Okay, I don't look no, at Facebook at all over the weekend. Do you have a question? I saw that poll on yeah. there and I thought the unfairness of the wording drew people away from A because it said increase in taxes. Yeah. Oh, which um, made may, may, I don't think the information it was quite expanded enough as to what the decision would be, because that may or may not, depending on how the council decides to budget. Mm -hmm. it's, very and it's not an automatic tax in, in, increase. It could be. Yeah. Well, unless I got fifty thousand dollars sitting in an account somewhere to just do it, there's going to be. Well, they have a budget. They can right. budget. But they they can rearrange. Well, we also, budget. like I said before, we also have. 
the increase in our tax capacity based on you know additional houses and stuff. So. So A, A was, I am supporting the city renewing our contract with the sheriffs and increasing hours, which will increase cost, taxes, etc. B is, I am supporting the city leaving exact, everything exactly like it is with the sheriff's contract. C is, I support something else. Well, but, and I suppose... But B could also have been a, a tax increase because the amount of... Yeah. Their the cost goes up. Yeah. That's what my question was, the fairness, of, and I did not vote on it for that reason okay. but the in information was not complete enough for the people to i think to make to have accurate. accurate yeah and just so you look at the cost too so it's 72 bucks an hour right mm -hmm. um my wage is 33 bucks 32.91 an hour it's almost mm -hmm. 33 bucks that's almost half of that cost is going just to cover that deputy's wage mm -hmm. Well, but you're actually costing them a little bit more, significant more when you start adding in your insurance, your <coughs> paid leave, so, your yeah. benefits, Over, all that Overall, stuff. Um, my annual salary, if you include all of that and stuff, it's like right around 100, mm -hmm. close to. When, oh, yeah. when you include all your benefits, Para, mm -hmm. Para is a great retirement system for us. It sucks for the communities, <laughs> but um, it's kind of one of the trade-offs to getting into the profession is you get it semi-decent tired of it anyways. Um, but the city has to contribute a lot of money into that as well. Right. So that stuff's all covered, the insurance. I don't know what the League of Minnesota Cities would up your insurance and stuff like that. I don't know, that was one thing I didn't include was because be I don't have I had I had emailed them once before what it would cost to to switch to our own private police department and what it would cost if we didn't have police coverage. And I never got nobody ever got back to me so I and I had sent an email to the Minnesota Post Board, that's um, my licensing board through the state of Minnesota. Um, and I asked them, when was the last department that was created, and who was it, and how many departments have disbanded over the past few years? Um, 41 had disbanded since, I forgot what the date was on that email, um, but within the last five years, 41 had disbanded. And since 2015, only one has been created, the Midewakan Conservation Officers, um, which is Mystic Lake Casino. They have money they can, <laughs> they, they, they can start their own FBI if they wanted to. So, um, I, I didn't see that as a very valid answer to my question that I asked them, but <laughs> that's what I got from them, unfortunately. So, uh, what do you think the driving factor is for that? Litigation? Or for people disbanding? Mm -hmm. There's less cops out there. Mm -hmm. Not, not as many people want to get into this profession anymore because of the negative stigma. Um, so when I got hired at the sheriff's office um, to get on an eligibility list, there was 360 people that took the test. Right now, if they post and put a test out, they might get 40, maybe 50. Well, and that's something that you have to consider too on creating a department is is finding cops. I think is going to become more and more difficult because of the bad rap that they get. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be a cop anymore. I've lost a lot of very great friends just because of the negative stigma of the profession, unfortunately. And it's gonna get worse, and you have to be able to let that roll off of your backs, and it takes time to get that type of armor. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife actually hates me right now because nothing bothers me, because I'm at that point in stage in my career kind of where I've seen dead babies, I've seen houses on fire, I've seen I've seen a lot of crap that the normal everyday person shouldn't see, so stuff just kind of, yeah, whatever. Um, but newer deputies and a newer police officer, a newer, when something like that happens, it's going to affect them, it's going to slow down progress, mm -hmm. it's going to make it, holy cow. Yeah. I think cost-wise too, Bru. I mean, I think, mm -hmm. you know, just the cost of running a police department, I think a lot of, you know, there's... That's why Forest Lake tried to disband because it was going to save them three hundred thousand dollars. But in in the bigger pool of the things, that was just a tiny little ripple. Yeah. I mean, their their overall police budget I think was seven million or something like that. Mm -hmm. So to save three hundred thousand dollars, it just right. let your tax base come up. It'll cover it but in the, a couple of years. But the smaller ones, I think, that are disbanding, it's like some of it could probably be cost because three thousand dollars in a smaller community. You know? Cost personnel. Um, the cost for equipment has gone up dramatically over the last five to ten years because now you need GPS, you need body cameras, you need That's video cameras. The required has yeah. increased. Right, well, and the training required gets more and more too. I mean, now we have to take mental health classes every year. Um, well, it, and the one crazy. thing that um, I don't remember if it was 
Dan Anselm, Captain Dan, or if it was Joe Agri, he said in, the, in that last meeting too was just kind of being in charge of the personnel too. Nobody wants to, <laughs> nobody wants to be in charge of police officers <laughs> or supervise them because it's a hard crew to supervise. Well, it's a, it's a hard it's a hard crew to supervise. Plus, the job security is very for a police chief especially is very very sketchy, which is why police chiefs make a lot more than sheriffs. Um, because sheriffs are elected, police chiefs are hired by the city, and nine times out of ten they're an at-will employee, so uh, you're not out there playing basketball with the kids enough, you're fired. Oh, oh, oh. Dang, and there's nothing you can do. There's no recourse about it, unfortunately. Um, so that that's scary, and you would want somebody who has the supervisory experience and stuff, somebody like a Captain Derringer or a sergeant or a lieutenant, they're getting paid more than I am. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. So to steal them away, you're gonna have to pay them more mm -hmm. than what they're getting at their already established apartment and stuff. One thing, Doug, you know, on that poll you're talking about, as soon as you mentioned taxes, boy, the flag is school. Yes. <laughs> well, I was I was going to add, if anything, it does say to the council that you need to be watching that. The overall idea of the taxes and how much people are be you know having to pay for taxes mm -hmm. you know in this case it kind of focused in my mind it focused on the police coverage mm -hmm. and I think 49 people who are saying who bothered to put that are saying overall you need to be watch your spending yeah. watch how you are spending the money right. but there's a funny thing too because there was something about uh, a park too that got posted on Facebook and everybody on there was yeah I don't care if right. I have to raise my taxes 150 yeah. 200 bucks <laughs> really <laughs> <laughs> right. and so it's you know a lot of people don't want to pay for the police because police get them in trouble but they want to pay for the park because park is something they can enjoy and have fun with yeah. mm -hmm. most of those people were renters or didn't live here right so taxes don't, right? don't, don't pay taxes so, exactly. they don't so it's that. easy for them yeah. to say that yeah. but everybody sees those results though in their life and that scares them too I mean you have 1800 members on that community of Montrose page you get 60 people or so call it 100 people so most of them are just trollers mm -hmm. most of them are just watching watching oh, the fireworks yeah. and when they see that stuff I mean me okay I don't have kids and stuff I don't want to see my taxes go up 500 bucks a year for a park that I might go to once a year right that's scary to me and I'm I'm a you know a fairly good representation of the average in Montrose I don't know what the household age is the median age is 29. So, yeah, that's this young one. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean on, to, on Doug's uh, comment there, there's, I've been here 20 years, and there's never been a council yet that says, yep, let's raise taxes because I want to. You know, let's, let's <laughs> nail it. Well, because people. we even need something. Uh, right. How can we do this without right. raising taxes? So, mm -hmm. yeah. the reality is, is that no matter where you live, your taxes go up. I mean, I live in a township, and my taxes go up. The reality is, is what can we do with the money, you know, if our taxes go up, you know, we don't want to raise them up so high that people can't afford to live here. Um, but we also, I know you guys don't want to, you don't want to be the bad people, but you also like heat, but um, one of them said that was sitting here before is, we've almost doubled our, our population also. And at some point we have to look at increasing our hours. I mean, it's just going to be a matter of fact. And do we want to do it five years from now or six years from now and increase it from eight hours to 16 hours and nail everybody to the wall for taxes? Or do we want to kind of do it slowly and build it into our, you know, year after year? You know, if it, someone's taxes go up $30 for the year for policing, I don't know that anybody's going to complain. If someone's taxes go up $100 for policing, they're going to complain. Um, so uh, you know that's another thing you just got to kind of keep in the back of your mind too is nobody wants to nobody wants to be on the council and, and raise taxes or be the bad person but um, it's just the cost of doing business nowadays it's you know things cost more and the other thing that you guys could possibly look at and I don't know if it's even a viable option or not but so 16 hours total between Montrose and Waverly we're paying for 10, 10. and they're paying for six of the proposed mm -hmm. Maybe there's some 
common ground that everybody can come to to make it closer to 50 50. I don't know. I don't know if, anybody has any I don't know if they do either. Yeah. I'm sure they don't want to spend an extra dime. But I think it was made clear that the tent that we are paying for, unless Waverly is called for service, mm -hmm. they would be here. They would be here on 10 out of the 16 mail, isn't it? So you have a 4640 car. That's the best representation that I can do because that's Montrose Waverly car as it is. His area is Montrose Waverly. He patrols that as he sees the need. So if there's a lot of thefts, car break-ins and stuff over in Waverly, he's gonna be spending more time over there. Um, a lot of times on the weekends, he's actually over there more because the uptown has more problems than the ugly bar. And they're open later. And they're open later. Um, so you have to understand that going in with this um, shared services thing that you have here. Um, it's a great benefit because drive time from Waverly over to here, less than two minutes if you have to. Um, you. Whereas if you're relying on the area car, if you rely on the area car, he might be coming from Hanover. Right. And we are situated in a very convenient location as far as area cars go. Um, so the 4100, which is the southeast beat, um, covers the city of Montrose. However, the city of Montrose is surrounded by southwest area. So the 5100 beat. So for me to get over into Montrose, because I work the 4100 beat, I actually have to go through the southwest area. So we get a lot of extra coverage from that southwest car into Montrose just by virtue of where we are. And that helps with the shared services and it helps with the police presence and stuff as well. My understanding, the reason they said 10 and six was because of the size of our city compared to the size of Waverly. For him to patrol Waverly takes two minutes. And I'm sure if you look, and I'm sure if you look at the calls, it probably yeah. would represent a close match to that as well. If you were going to be the car and you were going to drive down every street through Montrose and then go drive down every street in Waverly, it's twice as long or three times more to do it here than it is in Waverly. So that was kind of the reason of the 10 and 6 hours was my understanding. Yeah. And, and when you had asked about the time it takes for a call, like uh, Captain Darren was saying, it's hard to really judge that. I took a harassment complaint. Most of my harassment complaints from the time of the call until I'm done with the report, half hour. However, I took one a couple nights ago here from town. I spent over four hours on the paying thing, from phone calls to this person wanting more follow-up done, this, that, and the other thing over the course of you know three or four days. But it's still time. Right. Um, I think the average type of call that we take is probably an hour from start to finish. Some are much less. Some are way, way, way more. See, my concern on that was so this this call in particular was an hour and a half. That we had an officer sitting up by the DFW, and we have nothing going around town. So, so when that happens, can another you know officer that's close by maybe? If if that officer has time and wants to do it, um, mm -hmm. working the area car is kind of like a preferred thing, and it takes seniority to get into an area car because you can kind of do what you want. Right. Essentially, I can patrol a city. I can go patrol Highway 12. I can. I got a much larger area. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't minimize it, they brought it up, but what's in the boots on the grounds, cops, mines right now, is our safety. I want to get home at the end of my shift. So when I go to park somewhere to do a report, it's not, oh, this is a good spot job. There's a lot of processing in my mind that goes on. If you ever watch me at a city council meeting, or if you ever see me at a restaurant, you'll see certain things that you might or might not pick up on. My back is never to a door. Never. It's just instinct for me at this point. But that's what they're training us in school now too. And these two, they, they're very up on the times. Todd Hoffman is great with technology, staying educated and stuff. But what they're teaching in school now, paramount to everything is our safety. Which means you have to take certain aspects to make yourself safe. Parking out at the VFW is actually a great place because you can put your back to a wooded area mm -hmm. where you're safe, <clears throat> secure. Don't have to worry about it. There's minimal street light, but there's enough there where you can still see somebody walking. Because um, I park out there too and do reports. Um, plus it's an area where we actually get service on our internet card. Montrose sucks with Sprint. That's where our internet card is. So you got So you have to kind of take that with where, you know, that's why when I was working town, I parked at the wastewater treatment plant. I got a lot of complaints on it. I just dealt with the complaints because you want me to do my job, I got to do X, Y, and Z. You can only do X, Y, and Z at the wastewater treatment plant. So that's where I'm going to do my X, Y, and Z. And their 10 hours of being here doesn't mean that they're actually going to be 
driving around the streets for 10 hours every day. Because they serve wards during that time. They go to the school if the school has complaint. They come here if we call them for something. And they might get pulled out to go help on a emergent call out in the township. That's just by virtue of Howard Lake does the same thing. If you had your own PD, they would be going out into the township to help right. us out. Um, so there's always that. So, <laughs> Michelle, what the, the incident that you just mentioned? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be po would it be possible for if he know that officer knows it's going? You know, this is going to take me an hour and a half or it's looking along, isn't it possible to alert the area and say, you know, can you kind of help out because I'm really focused on this? You, usually that's... Do they do that? Absolutely, and that's okay. that's why... Maybe that's something you would need to request that, yep. you know, and we'll he, remind your officers that... that and But well, that, 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 that actually happens automatically, usually. It does? Yeah, okay. Um, so the area car, where I work, um, they don't put new guys in there because it, it's kind of like the in-between between between the new guy and the sergeant type thing. Okay. So it's my responsibility to kind of know what my area cars are doing. If I know one is totally backlogged on reports, I'm gonna go spend more time over in that okay. city so I can take his call so, so he can get caught. That. Yes, I can see what they're doing. I can okay. see how many calls they've had before I got on and stuff. Um, that's why they put more seasoned people in the area cars because they're we don't take as many calls necessarily, but we have to manage our time much more differently um, than a contract car. A contract car comes in the city, mm -hmm. he works the city. The area car, okay, I have to cover all the township, that's my responsibility. Plus I have to cover the cities as backup car and help them out if they're going to jail. Now I'm responsible for that city. Right. So. I, did, I actually did a ride along two years ago when I first became counsel with Ryan Ferguson. That was on fair to you kind of because he was a sergeant. Mm -hmm. Sergeants have even more tasks. Um, unfortunately a lot of times they won't put like council and stuff with the city car just because they're young and they might say something wrong or they might be afraid and things like that. Right. Um, so it's kind of a catch-22 type thing almost. Yeah. Um, and you know to work to do a ride along in the area car you're not really getting a sense for what the city's doing or Right, no, I drove everything with them, but it was a chance to see that, like you said, the area car does notice, like if that, you know, that officer, okay. then they do okay. come around and he did patrol extra once that officer was. And sergeants do the same thing as well. Um, we also have traffic cars through most of our shifts that are just basically extra personnel. We call them traffic cars, but if Monticello is getting slammed with calls, so they're paying for 48 hours a day, but if they're getting slammed on calls, they might be getting 100 hours that day just because we're gonna throw resources up at them. Right. Same thing down here. We had the homicide last year in town here. The resources just got slammed into here. And it's not just Wright County you're getting either. Howard Lake's coming over to help sometimes. State patrol's here constantly. Um, DNR's going through. I mean, it's, it's much more than just Wright County. And if you have your own PD and stuff, sometimes getting those relationships fostered back in is very difficult. Um, the numbers that are in the report as well, they're numbers. You can make them say whatever you want them to say, essentially. State Patrol's numbers aren't accounted for there. I know State Patrol's been in town a lot recently mm -hmm. and just outside of town. The other thing is, so a lot of times um, these new guys, I'm going to use Deputy Lundin as an example. He's, I don't want to call him my poster child, but I'm helping bringing him up, kind of. Uh, so he'll be right, or he'll be watching the stoplight here. Car zooms through. He goes and stops him at Highway 12 and Meridian, outside the city limits. That stop, that call, is not counted in it's your numbers, right. unless he changes it in Zerker, and they're not really teaching or training them to do that. So the numbers are probably higher, however it also goes reverse-wise. I might have a speeder at Highway 12 and Meridian, stop him at Highway 12 and Zephyr, and just leave it the way that it is rather than switch it. So it, it does go both ways with it, mm -hmm. but the contract cars are generally much more active than your area cars. So, like I said, you can make the numbers say whatever you want them to say. That's the virtual statistics. So. Michelle, I, this is on a separate note. I thought about it when they were talking about it. Is, is there a way, can we not introduce who's in town on on our city website, put a picture of these guys. Most of them won't want it. 
Oh, like the officer? I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would have to ask them if they They're would be approval, willing to right. do that. You would actually need to get the sheriff's office approved yeah. because my picture in uniform is actually property of the sheriff's office. I can't even post it on well, Facebook. Right no. no. And that's yeah, something that, that I'm just wondering if that would help people to know, yes, no. we've got cover. These are the, the guys that are in our town. I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Anything to kind of or boost the positive. But even to boost the positive or tell a little bit about them, even if you don't use their picture. And that's yes. something that the Sheriff's Office is actually looking into on a much larger scale right now. Um, a little bit. <laughs> uh, but is, you know, what can we do to boost morale or get a little bit more of the pomp and circumstances? When I got my badge, you know, a lot of these departments put on these big shows and you know, have them come into a city council meeting or a sheriff's board, family's there, honor guard is there, big pomp and circumstance. We don't do that here. We've never done that here. But they're looking at that as an option to maybe change, in which case it would make us more open to the community. And if that's something that you guys think would help, I think bringing that up to them, that, that idea, hey, can we put a picture of these guys? What are your thoughts? I don't know what their response would be, to tell you the truth. Even if we didn't put their picture, if we just, just said their names. names. And, you know, names or even a little yeah. short, you know, yeah. graduate of this school. Yeah. You know, so, and yeah. so some some people would like it. Like if I was still working town, I'd say, oh, yeah, sure. Most people here know me anyways. Right. Right. A, lot of these, <laughs> a lot of them aren't set in those communities yet either. So and that's the hard thing. And the biggest thing I can say about getting them to feel welcome is it takes a lot of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't for me because I was already yeah. part of the fire department. I grew up here. Charlie Nelson was the mayor at the time. I've known he Charlie was the since. police officer. Yeah. Well, that was old Charlie. Old Charlie, Charlie. Yeah. Charlie patrolling, and there are enough of us around who remember. He would I patrol, I believe, from what, 4 to 10 every night? Mm -hmm. he he that car dog. never stopped. Him and his dog. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, usually and there are you, enough people who remember that patrolling aspect and seeing that car coming through the neighborhood. And if you see a, a deputy park, there's usually a reason why he's parked. We're human, we have to take breaks too. We gotta call our wives, we gotta say goodnight to our kids, we gotta do you know, whatever it might be, we gotta eat. Um, we're human too, and that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And just remembering that and treating the deputies as human too. It's gonna make them wanna stay here longer in this area. They might actually try to bid for it next year. Um, it's actually one of the more funner areas to work because you get a little bit bigger of an area. Um, because between Montrose and Waverly, it's about the size of Delano, street-wise and call-wise even probably about the same so it's it's a nice area to work I love working it I just like these hours better unfortunately so and maybe um like at the council meetings each month every month when you ask him if he's got anything maybe actually have him come up and introduce himself so everybody knows you know even if it's every month to say his name up yeah, at the okay. podium or something and then people will see it on the video and then they'll know that we you know and if, even if he doesn't have much if he just says well, you know the, and I would, I would talk to him before himself. the meeting, just yeah. so you don't catch him off yeah. guard a little bit. But ask I, him if he's willing to do that. And I've been trying to, when it's Lundin that's there, um, you know, I don't want to say coach him to say, hey, this, that, or the other thing, but I'm like, hey, this might be coming up, or you know, you might want to have an answer for this. If he has that from you guys before I can give it to him, that's going to make you guys look way much better. Yeah. And it's going to make you, yeah, you guys much more approachable. Because yeah. if you see him come into the room, he's going to come to somebody that he feels comfortable with. Obviously, I'm going to be one of those people, but if it's you guys who are making that contact with him, he might come make contact with you before he even comes and sees me, because he knows that when I'm there, I'm there as the fire chief. I'm not there as a deputy. I try to keep my life separate, even though they bleed over to an extreme amount sometimes. So they usually come into City Hall and introduce themselves you know, when they are in town and it's somebody different, and they stop in every now and then to see if we have anything, any problems. So. You know, maybe ask him if he'd mind doing that, and even if it's each meeting, just so everybody gets mm -hmm. to know who he is. And a lot of people too think that okay, you have your own police department. Now that person can do all of your enforcement of ordinances and stuff. There's only certain ordinances that law enforcement can deal with, essentially. So I couldn't deal with the recreational enforcement issues, essentially. Right. Those got to be admin fines. Plus, you want them to be admin fines because then at least the money comes back to the city. Whereas, if it's a curfew violation, that goes to you know two thirds of it go to the state. One third of it goes back to the county, so it's you know ineligible almost. So 
and I do want a three-story ladder truck. So <laughs> let, let, let's raise taxes for that. You don't three-story buildings. So three. <laughs> Why are you selling yourself short? Let's go with a four or five. Just Future. I like your thinking. <laughs> I don't understand what the issue is. So I think is it safe to say that? I mean, going with our own department, just based on the costs and the the process involved, it's not it's not feasible. So really, we're determining whether we keep eight hours or ten hours. Is that expenses? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 agreement that no. keep yeah. counting. We just need to determine is it eight or ten. So when you come back to us in July with with this agenda item, are we going to kind of have some idea where the money could come from? Because since we don't budget until August, yeah, I don't think we'll have done our budgeting yet. When was this going to kick in July first? No, we'll we won't go anymore this year. We'll wait and just do it starting January first. Yeah. Okay. But we just have to do a preliminary budget. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I mean, we'll do a budget anyway. What September? Or it has to be approved by September. Yes. How much did we raise taxes this year? Do you remember? A lot. Uh, we threw out the figure ten percent. Right? Wasn't it ten? Can we keep it at ten? There's somehow when she breaks it down where it only turns out to be like 3.8. I was going to say, 4.1 is ringing a bell. I was just going to say, I want to say it was like 4%. I don't remember off the top of my head. I've been working on this too long. So if you had to levy, for, if you had to levy for that money even, so you're talking about if you had to keep the 4.1 and add on to that 4.5% probably equals to, to cover the extra 50000 or so. But your state aid might be going up too. That's one of the questions that you never know really. Tax capacity is going up. That's why the council is in that state aid. They like to keep cutting that, don't they? We usually we get about ten thousand dollars in state aid for the police. A little over ten. So if we if our we increase the hours, we'd probably get a little bit more. Sure. Um, I think our LGA is going up this year because more was appropriated at the. Like, State level, so I think ours is going up a little bit. I haven't. I think it just got downloaded to the league site, so I can go out and look now and see what they're estimating everybody to be at. So, how are they appropriate? Just by the population? Uh, they have some factor they use. It's really, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying some crazy. I'm yeah, trying to figure it out because, yeah. like, the city of Waverly doesn't even get any. Uh, yeah, they don't get LGA. So, some cities do and some don't, and it has to do with your levy and your I, I think they include some of your population and I I don't know all the ins and outs but some of them don't receive it at all and I don't know why maybe we might be getting it now but they never used to it so That's yeah crazy. I can um, I doubt that the county will have our tax capacity yet because last year I had to bug them I bugged them well into the year <laughs> last year I think it was September or October by the time I, maybe middle yeah. September before they even got it to me. Because they didn't have their numbers yet. Paula? Tammy's gone this week. <laughs> 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 and she's new. But they, I think last year they had started, did you guys start some new program last year or something? It took a little longer to get it all. I can't remember why there was a reason. Because normally I have it fairly early, but I'll see what I can do. I, I'll see what I can come up with. Even if I base it on, a, even if I base it on last year's tax capacity, and just say, okay, we'll maybe go up, you know, I can kind of guess a little bit, or just like, increase a little bit. I can kind of figure out how much it would be, based just on that, because I can go back and look and see how we've been increasing over the last few years, mm -hmm. and come up with something, and with our LGA, and yeah, I can do that. Anybody have anything else? Yeah, I think it was good information. Thanks for all your extra input. It's helpful. How many officers have body cams? What's that? Dash cams. Every one of us. Every all of you. Body cams are coming. I was saying, Ray County hasn't implemented it yet. Have they? We're, we won't implement it. This is from what I know, from what I've heard through the pipeline. Is that we won't implement it until it becomes state mandated. Well, that would, wouldn't that be more safe for both parties, for the officer and for? There's a lot of misuse of the cameras, unfortunately. Um, when um, our dash cams came out, there was a stigma that, oh great, 
they're just going to use this to to uh, get me in trouble. And then now what it's become is if I make a traffic stop and I arrest John Smith on a DWI, unless I have that recorded, it'll get tossed. So my word as a police officer means nil to nothing to the courts unless it's videotaped. So yeah, that's really a shame. It, it is. It really is. It is. Right. I, I can say A, B, and C. Um, a drug dealer can say D, E, and F. And unless I have video to back up what I'm saying, a lot of times it just gets topped. It's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. The justice system is not perfect. Um, but yeah, the, the sheriff's office is starting to budget for body cams. I think they're putting $50,000 a year away for it. Um, and it's not the body cams themselves that are expensive, it's the software to run it and the storage. And right. Then you have to have policies in place of who can view what, and it, it's very messy right now, and we'll see how things mm -hmm. shake out <coughs> somewhat, so. Mm -hmm. I know when, just get on my, my problem so. Pretty much. <laughs> when my husband had a traffic stop, that I was a state trooper. Um, he had, my husband had a gun pulled on him by another, and they had a portion of the body cam, mm -hmm. And then the little, well, you know, little connection of them, obviously the cameras, them, they shut it off mm -hmm. multiple times. So what's the point? So that is not condoned by policy, but very well used by seasoned officers, essentially. Sometimes there's things that we might not want recorded, um, whether it's trying to get information on a drug somebody who's selling drugs or something like that. That's probably the best example I can use. There's many other examples. Um, but, you know, if, if I want person A to squeal on person B, it's a traffic stop, I'm supposed to record it. Oops, my mic got turned off accidentally. Mm -hmm. That's not going to matter anyways. It's just going to point me in a direction. You know, I'm not going to use that as cause to go and bust down somebody's door or anything. But it gives me the intelligence that I need. It's, it's a way to gain intelligence, essentially, for that officer. Per our policy, whenever we make a traffic stop or have contact, we're supposed to have our microphones activated and stuff. If we don't, we're subject to discipline accordingly. So. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, Kevin, for your mm -hmm. We used we used to do that. Um, now we have Dragon software, which some use. Yeah, I'll just keep on all my stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do that. 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 I can't do that